What's happening, my Jack family? Coach Scott here, jackedafter40.com. Welcome to the Jacked After 40 podcast. Today, I am joined by one of my coaching clients, Aaron Sanchez. If you watched the most recent video on my Jacked After 40 Life YouTube channel, you would have saw Aaron in action, absolutely kicking butt with his home workouts, making the most out of what he had at the time. He's got a much more kick-ass setup in his home gym now. Uh, but seeing him sliced and diced, you gotta check him out there. And he's also sharing um, some great meal ideas. It was really great seeing how he has incorporating incorporated my teaching of the, the Jack at the 40 lifestyle and kind of adopted it to his own. So highly recommend you check out that video to kind of get an idea behind this story. We're deep diving much deeper into today. Um, I'm going to include a link down below in the description. So Aaron, thanks a million, first of all, for recording that video, kind of sharing a week of your life, especially during a transition when you're getting ready to move across the country. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And I know a lot of my fellow men over 40 really appreciated you uh, sharing those insights, especially some of those great meal ideas that I'm looking forward to incorporating into my diet. Oh, absolutely. It was fun. <laughs> It was great, man. I love the the potatoes. The the potatoes with the the bison sausage really appealed to me, and then the pumpkin with the uh, with the the cacao powder and just the different little things that I'm like, wow, like great combinations. Uh, just a great way to get your taste buds dancing, fuel your body, fuel your muscles, and, and help improve our performance overall. It's also something where. I don't know if it's something that had been honed over years or something naturally that is just kind of my natural rhythm of eating style, if you will. But I'm a volume eater. Like I can't, I can, I can do anything, you know, the eat every two to three hours um, structure. But I also like to look for lower calorie options that are going to keep me full for you know, my kind of gauge is three to five hours. Like if I can eat something like my breakfast, it's only around, you know, 450 calories, but I, it fuels my workout and I'm not hungry generally until lunch. So it's just, it's better. Uh, I look for things and, you know, I like making, I call them pumpkin pies, although i prefer a real pumpkin pie, but just taking the puree, adding in a couple of eggs, maybe some cacao powder, just bake it 30, 45 minutes. And I mean, it's going to keep, keeps you pretty full for a few hours. You add some protein powder after or in the pie. And so I, I look for things like that. And I guess uh, I'm one of those weird people. I actually like protein bars. <laughs> I like the taste. I like what people call faux foods. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's it's all good. And it was um yeah, it's it was it was interesting hearing from you. Just I mean, you prefer to eat three meals per day. Um I I'm kind of a, a three, four, five if I'm like if I'm trying my when I'm when I'm in muscle building mode, maintenance mode. And my calories are higher. I'm not, I don't like feeling over full, but there's also like you and I are very similar. We're at a stage where we're trying to optimize things. And just from some of the research that I've read, none of it's conclusive. It's just, you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt, apply it to your own lifestyle, see if it makes much of a difference. But um, the way it's looking to me is that, especially after 40, spreading out your protein a little bit more throughout the day, can have its benefits. So uh, that's kind of the one of the little areas I feel like I've mastered the fundamentals and I'm looking at areas of, of minutia there. And this is something, a topic that we're gonna get into later in this podcast. You are fantastic at really looking at all different aspects of life, how you can squeeze every ounce out of it, really optimize different aspects of, of your lifestyle there. So we're gonna dive into that pretty soon, but. Um, yeah, right now I just kind of want to get into, I mean, I, I consider you a friend, like a brother from another mother. You're a client. I feel like you are so much like me and it's probably why we have a lot of great deep conversations and, and you're not the only one. I find I attract a lot of 
guys, a lot of men over 40 to my coaching to the jacked after 40 club who are very similar to me, who are, we're masculine, we're strong, but we're not afraid to share our emotions. We're not afraid to be vulnerable. We just, we put it all out there. We want to grow. We want to learn and we want to grow. So um, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about that experience, the, the benefit of camaraderie. Some people would say building a tribe. I like the Jack F40 club feeling just probably because the club is, it's more like the workout type atmosphere there. And tribe I think has been overused, but I get, I get the vibe of that. So let, let's talk yeah. a bit about, about that. Community. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think the transition for me really started to happen as I was approaching 40 and I don't know if it was subconscious or why the shift kind of happened. Um, but <laughs> as we were in another transition moving from the East coast to the West coast to Seattle, um, I, you know, started to put myself out there a little bit more. I started to feel the need more for friendships. And I've always, I'm, I'm somebody who's very introverted. I like spending time alone. I need it to recharge. But also feeling recharged by a conversation with a good friend or you know, meeting up for lunch, it just like kind of changing the trajectory of, of the day and consequently the week and the month and, you know, building this momentum. And then, you know, so I had met some good, good friends there in Seattle and, you know, the pandemic hit and everyone's kind of left scrambling. Things are up in the air and I really started to feel the need to connect. And, you know, I, I prefer not to do it over phone, over text, over social media and that thing, but it, you know, it only, it became necessary. And so I feel, I just do better. I do better that, you know, when I have, you know, our conversations or something, you know, something's happening or I'm in a moment of panic or this and, you know, we'll chit chat for five, 10 minutes and makes all the difference and not carrying, not feeling like I have to carry those feelings and just keep them to myself. Like somebody else is there to listen and understand and, they're going through things and i think you know the 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 kind of narrative has shifted over the past couple of years with men being more open and in touch with their feelings and i mean i i have no shame in that like I, i'm gonna put it all out there and you can accept it and those you know i found really good people and i have really good people in my life that we can share anything and there's no, no judgment there. You know, so coming into the jacked after 40 community and club, it's just a continuation of that. You know, of course we have a common bond and that common bond is lifting weights, trying to look our best, trying to be our best, but it, it, it's more than that. It is trying to optimize like, I like to say like, you know, pull every, everything out that you can from every moment. 100%, 100%. Yeah. So for those listening, Aaron just recently turned 40 in the past few months and it's really got a jump start into doing all of the right things that a lot of us are kind of scrambling for having already hit our 40. So hitting the ground running there. And yeah, I, to me, like listening to you talk, it's um, when we do put ourselves out, there more and we're not afraid of being judged so we surround our people with people who we surround ourselves with people who who we know aren't going to judge us um it just adds more substance to the conversations i find it's um yeah it makes you you have one conversation where you, you start 
sharing stuff that you probably wouldn't have shared with anybody else for fear of being judged. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh wow, this person is going through it as well or something similar, or or maybe they've gone through something completely different. And they shared that with me. Like it's the more you share, you're like, well, then why am I sharing? Why am I not sharing everything else? And you just, you just get it all out there and you start realizing, I mean, when we're looking at things like optimizing sleep, stress management and everything, I think the more you talk, the more you get off your chest, um, the better you feel throughout the day. The less you go to bed feeling a weight on you from the day, a burden of holding that stuff in. And it's also the, the community aspect. I think another thing that has shifted for me is, um, you know, I, I have like, it doesn't change the friendship. We're still really good friends, but there's just some people you go to for certain things. Right. And so that's why it's a community. That's why it's a club because, you know, I may not go to so-and-so for advice on investing in real estate. That just may not be where their specialty lies. And I may not be good in some something, but having, people you trust in your life with those things it does it it, for mental health it makes all the difference and in your day-to-day and when the other part of community is when everyone's trying to build everyone else up it snowballs and you create a movement you create more energy than you could otherwise by yourself i feel you 100 percent, man no doubt about it i think we're lucky we're, there's i i consider myself lucky i consider myself I'm, I'm just grateful for the connections i have with uh with so many of the people within the, the jacked after 40 club it's uh yeah the shared experience it's it's a beautiful thing man for sure now let's dive into some of the optimization stuff what are what are the some of the things that you've been dabbling with as of late would have been some of the things that you have found to be effective in just optimizing i guess all areas of your lifestyle um for me meditation is is a huge one and i know that's an easy answer why it works i don't know but for i like to think in my specific case it helps. I'm, I, I'm somebody who would, you would say shoots from the hip. <laughs> and I've kind of always have been, you, uh, you know, more reactive than proactive. And through meditation, I have gained seconds. And seconds is sometimes all it takes to change the direction in a more positive way and to just stop and think about what i'm doing how i'm doing it in the moment and i i think i only can speak for myself here but i I think sometimes i just go on autopilot and then i don't even know if i liked the thing i was doing or was watching or was listening to or reading or eating and you think back and i'm like I, just, I, w- I wasn't even there and I don't want to miss those things, especially having, you know, two kids. I want to be present in moments. So for me in optimization, meditation is a game changer. And of course, along with that journaling and I, I've found that like, you don't have to do those things for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Like you've got to find the time that works for you when you can do it, that's optimi- optimization. Because the research may show at you know 3.55 p.m. is when you'll get the most benefits. But if I can't fit that in my life, it's never going to work. It's never going to become a habit. I'm never going to do it. And I'm only going to beat myself up for missing out on those things. So the journaling, meditation, um, then, of course, I do have an aura ring, 
which is going to track, you know, HRV. And that's been interesting to see because now I feel like it does read me pretty well. And generally I try to take assessment of how I'm feeling prior to opening the app. So I'm not like, Oh, my HRV is through the roof. I've recovered when I really don't feel that way. But generally speaking, it's pretty accurate. And, you know, some of the things I can pick up on there or if I eat too large of a meal at night and next morning, sure enough, my temperatures was elevated, you know, so my digestion wasn't, you know, wasn't working through the night as I would want. I was hotter deep sleep scores lower so small things like that where it's easy it's easy to fix right yeah yeah absolutely and you're it's great that you have this heightened sense of awareness yeah that the ring is just a tool the app is just a tool um but you're very aware of the situation and everything we talk a lot about this (laughs) because there's times there's times where you're doing a lot of the right things to get a great night's sleep, but you're still not quite getting the, the hours, the duration that, uh, that you're, you're hoping for. So it's, it's interesting, but at least your scores are high. So it looks like you're recovering. Maybe you don't require, maybe you are, there are some people who don't require as much sleep as, as others, but uh, yeah. I truly am starting to think that because, you know, for the past two years, it's, it's, I get like, you need sleep to recover. And, you know, the, 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 so the things I have kind of, you can run yourself ragged trying to optimize everything in which I think at the, when you get to that point, it just does more harm than good. Um, but for me, those are when I just take a step back and I'm just, I look at my, kind of tenets and my how I can evaluate myself and it's I don't aside from loving coffee I don't need caffeine I don't need caffeine to wake up I don't need caffeine during the day if I don't drink it I don't get a headache I don't so I don't need an energy drink I'm not lagging Uh, you know I not having to power through my workouts. So those are the things that I'm looking to. Okay, like how am I functioning just as a human being day to day? And if there was a problem there, then maybe I'd be a little bit more concerned. Then I, you know, probably would go get a sleep study and do further things to evaluate and figure those things out. But whether it's the end of the night or the beginning of the day, I've got energy to do all the things I need to do. And that's, I think that's more important than hitting a specific number. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you 100%. Now, so caffeine under control. Um, what are other things you're doing to optimize your sleep, to help you get the best night's sleep, even whatever that best night's sleep is for you? Um, what are some of the things that you're doing there? So I probably do more than most, but I do probably around, since it gets dark where I'm at, uh, around 5.30, I do put on the first set of blue blocking glasses. Um, And then as I move into the night, I do um, the blue green light blocking glasses, which I don't know if you have used those, but that, I mean, you like, you can't, if it's dark, you can't see. I mean, they're, wow. It's which, but it does cut out all green light, green and blue light. Um, so I'll use those then for me. No, you know, generally I stop drinking liquids around four. Um, because I find that if I drink too close to bed, I'm going to it's a, get woken up and have to go to the bathroom during the night. Um, I've really started to push for no phone starting about eight. Um, My wife and I do still watch TV, but that is some of our only 
free time. Um, so it's kind of, that's a trade off, right? So I'm not going to not share an experience with my wife because I shouldn't view a screen that close to bedtime. Like, you, you know, so I'm not going to do those things, but then other things is a lot of things that you're doing. It's, I like to read something easy. I dump out all my thoughts in my journal. They don't make sense. A lot of the times it's maybe a, just a plan or it's just wherever my mind is. I just, that's where, what I write. And th th that's another big difference too is generally I have no problem falling asleep except when a lot's on my mind. And then what happens is I'll hit 10.30 and catch a second wind. And then I'm not going to fall asleep until, you know, 12 or 1. But that generally doesn't happen because of what I do prior. Right. Very, very similar for sure. I'm, I'm big on, on meditation myself. I, I listen to the meditation audio before I, I go to bed. I find like my walks are very meditative. Like it's, 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 I'm ground. Anytime you, you can ground yourself in the moment, I think can be very meditative. Um, so all that stuff helps me. I'm very much the same with doing a brain dump before bed. Um, and even kind of writing out my to-do list for the next day. So sometimes I could go to bed thinking about what do I have to get done tomorrow? And I don't want those kinds of things on my mind. Uh, yeah, the reading, the foam rolling, the self massage. It was great to hear you on the video, the last video there talking about your little routine there. So, uh, yeah, I haven't gone to the point of getting like the, the glasses, but I do change the setting on my computer and my phone to block out the, the blue light. So it's more yellow light after five o'clock. Um, so I do a few of those things. Now, how about when you're in bed? Is there anything that you do to kind of help yourself fall asleep? Or uh, yeah. Asleep? Like when it's, when it's like, okay, I'm shutting it down. Um, I do my earplugs and then I have my, my sleep mask. And that's when I kind of just let my thoughts come and go. I don't focus on any one of them. Um, I do my nasal breathing or oh, I mouth tape as well. So I have to breathe through my nose. And usually what I'll do there is I start like a four count and then hold as long as I can, you know, and a slow exhale, start to really just let go of the day and of the stress and let go of thoughts and usually I'm out pretty quickly once that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel you there. Solid sleep routine there. Are there any other areas of your life, whether it's training, lifestyle, nutrition, that you're done some little optimization stuff with? Uh, I think I'm one. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Sometimes. Um, I mean, yeah, all the time all the time like if if i can gain any sort of edge i'm gonna try to do it and you know i, I keep repeating it but for some people it's not going to be worth it it causes more stress just like calorie counting like personally i don't care it, it doesn't bother me it's easy for me it works and I don't get stressed when I go on vacation, like my meals stay so similar and I'm not afraid to eat treats if I want something. Um, but yeah, so I like to play around with foods and add different foods. Like one thing I've been playing around with uh, really over the past, I would say two to three months is adding more organ meats in. Yes. So whether I make a, you know, chicken liver mousse or I've done, you know, cow, cow tongue tacos, I'm not going to tell my kids that's what they're eating, but, um, you know, kidney and liver and heart and adding those things kind of in experimenting more. 
um, just to see. And, you know, how do you quantify if it's making a difference or not? I don't know. I generally sleep good, um, wake up, have energy to crush the day, crush my workouts, to be there for my kids, to be there for my wife, do the things I need to do day to day. So I continue to do them. Right? <laughs> so I, I like to play around with diet in that kind of way and, and push boundaries. Like right now, I was thinking about it and this is probably the highest my calories have ever been. And I'm trying to just lean into it, right? Because I know I'm not, I don't get paid to work out. I'm not sponsored, but I want to take care of my body and my mind, not just for today, but for years in the future. And I feel like those kinds of things, that experimentation, you, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about how you function, things you like, what works, what doesn't. And the, the goal is, is to see how far I can push without, kind of, you know, kind of come into the brink of, of breaking yourself and then pulling back a little bit and reside there. All right, so you touched on some, I think a really important point there is that, yeah, we can experiment with all these different things, trying to optimize our lifestyle and everything, but it really, really is tough to, gauge if certain things are, are working for us. It's one thing if like improving sleep quality, quality, a lot of that you can tell, but simple little things like, yeah, the kidneys, the livers, those types of foods, you may, may notice a subtle improvement in performance and well being. But the bottom line is just, you know, you know, you're doing good things. And the, and the important thing is that you're enjoying it, that the, the, you're enjoying the taste of the foods, the meals, the process. It's not wearing you down, which is a, a key point of not, not letting the minutia stress you out. And I think it's very important to note that, that you are, you've really, you've got a solid foundation under your belt before you start kind of manipulating all of this. Someone's just yeah. starting off. You're not going to experiment with all these things right out of the gate. Sure. Well, you know, first, thank you. But yes, it's, I, no matter how far out I go, I always kind of come back to, the basics and when if it's building it's you know i don't know who the quote was from but you can't build a two-story house on a one-story foundation something like that where you know when you think about it it makes sense right i i mean i've been now lifting weights for i mean 20 years and that's not even as long as some people in the game and i've like done the a keto diet intermittent fasting like uh, i've done it all and i still come back to like i like my same breakfast and i try to change them and whether it would take time to adjust or i just don't enjoy them as much and so i'm going to eat what i enjoy so my meal structure stays the same and it's easy to kind of find your way back when you know what your baseline is. Right. I feel you a hundred percent there for sure. And one other thing you mentioned that you're, I mean, this is like kind of the most you've eaten. Um, you are right now I've got you at 3,200 calories that we just bumped you up to. Uh, stats wise, I mentioned it in the last video, you're five, eight, 160 pounds right now. Um, and 40 years old. Uh, it's, it is like, you're definitely, you're at the, you're pushing it. Like for someone your size, you're consuming. That's, that's a fair amount of calories. That's a lot of food volume. Um, you're doing well, man, especially to be able to kind of maintain your weight there. It's, it's slow and steady. So we, we're taking a nice slow and steady approach, finding your maintenance and, and just pushing beyond that a little bit. Um, talk to me a little bit about previous, previous experiences with bulking and cutting. Is it something you'd ever do it again? Are you kind of liking this style a little bit better? Um, talk to talk more on that. 
Well, as a, um, a former fat kid, I think that has been, you know, something that has changed my mentality. It's, it's, I, I started, when I started my weight loss journey, I did the, the bodybuilding, eat every two to three hours. I carried around protein bars and it worked. I mean, it, it worked uh, over a, a couple of years. I lost, you know, 55 pounds, went from 203, got down into the 140s. And then from there, it was in working with good people and, you know, both therapists and, and, and you know, people in, in the know and in the industry, it had been a change in like always being afraid you're going to gain that weight back. And then reaching a point where I'm at now where just trusting in the process, it's almost like shutting that voice off. So waking up and just leaning on your guidance and letting you worry about those kinds of things. I'm just going to eat the food and I'm going to work out as hard as I can and I'm going to do whatever I need to do to recover. And that's just, it's, um, as far as bulking and cutting, you know, I don't really see the need to, and I, I prefer the slow and steady because I know, you know, short of taking anabolics with where I'm at in lifting and believe me, I haven't thrown in the towel because I wouldn't be doing all the other things I do if I'd thrown in the towel. But I personally don't have any interest of aiming for 15 pounds and then having to diet hard just to get kind of back to baseline. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the interest. So this approach fits me 100%, fits my mentality and my personality. I prefer this knowing that like it's not that I don't believe in goals but like my goal is to lift forever so I'm not in in a rush to do anything I'm just enjoying where I'm at and I'm enjoying the process and I'm not trying to stress about it Perfect. I think that is that is spot on. And that's probably a, a beautiful way to, to wrap things up is just not although we talked a lot about trying to optimize things and all all the minutia and all just not not stressing about it, just having fun like somewhere along the line. Um, yeah, just bodybuilding has become too much. Yeah, not not so much fun. It's like really overanalyzing at, at a point where it's sometimes you just got to sit back and yeah, just have some fun with it and roll with it and yeah, trust the process. I think the more you're having fun, the more you're going to give to it, the more you're going to get out of it. So that, uh, that was fantastic. I know I had a lot more that I wanted to, to ask you. I think we're just going to have to, we're just going to have to have yes. another one of these calls again. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I, I'm sorry. I can, when I get going, I can talk. <laughs> I talk you a lot. Know. You and I both. That's why we hit off. There's so many different things. And, and I look forward to doing cooking classes with you and learning from you. And um, yeah, we're just going to, 2021 is going to kick some butt. So I'll get you back on again. We'll have some more fun discussions, share more, more, just more fun stuff. But I thank you for yeah, taking Plus, it'll, it'll also be interesting to see where I'm at in a couple of months on the higher calories and how my body responds and kind of how we need to adjust from there. So, um, like I said, I'm enjoying the process, living the jacked after 40 life. And, you know, I, I love it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't. And, but at the end of the day, it's just, it, I mean, it's, it's fun. I feel great mentally, physically. And yeah, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Right. 100%. That is exactly what it's all about. Just 
feeling our best, looking our best and just having a great zest for life. And I think a yearning just to, to learn more. It's a, yeah. Just to explore ourselves more, tap more into our own potential. It's a, it's a curiosity. I think you mentioned that in a recent message to me in a, through, through the app there, just being more curious. And uh, I think that's just a great way to live. Um, so that's fantastic, man. Yeah, we got so much more to talk about, but we, we will wrap this up here. So thanks again, Aaron, for joining me today. Thanks again for the video that you recorded. Uh, the last time with your training, with your meals, and I look forward to having you on again. Thanks for being you, man. I appreciate it. As, as a brother and as a client, uh, you absolutely kick ass. Likewise. It's uh, having your guidance is, I mean, it means the world. It's, it's just awesome to not have to think about those things and to, you know, have you as a resource. It's, it's a game changer. I appreciate that. And for the audience, you want to join a community like-minded bros like Aaron and myself, head on over to jackedafter40.com. Visit the Jacked After 40 Club. We'd love to welcome you in there. Love to hear your comments, what you gain, any insights that you gain from today's uh, video conversation here, today's podcast. Uh, drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, insights, and feedback. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you next time.